product analytics. Whether you're creating the next SaaS application or just maintaining a simple website, you need to know how users are interacting with your product. This can come in the form of simple indicators like daily active users, retention time, and bounce rate, but it should also include more advanced features like session recording, A-B experiments, and feature flag testing. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to PostHog, which is an open source product analytics suite that tracks user behavior across your applications. Now I know that sounds intimidating, but it's not. Integrating PostHog with a traditional website can be literally as simple as copying and pasting a snippet of JavaScript code. There's also integrations and software development kits available so you can ingest event data no matter what the source is. Once you have PostHog set up, it'll give you insight into everything users are doing on your website. Not only does it give you all the statistics and graphs you need about user activity, it actually gives you screen recordings of everything the user did on your website or application. Now, full disclosure, PostHog did sponsor me to create this video, but all the opinions I give on the product are of my own, and it is a product that I use for my own website, devopslifecycle.com. Now let's get into how you can set up PostHog for your own website. Although you can host your own instance of PostHog, the easiest way to get started is to use the cloud hosted version which you can find a link to in the description below. Once your account is created and you set up your organization there's a simple onboarding walkthrough to get your app set up. To get my website set up I click the web option and then copy and pasted the provided snippet of JavaScript code. Now in order to show you some interesting graphs and recordings I'm going to let PostHog run for a week so future Brad is going to take over the tutorial from here. All right, so once you've integrated PostHog to your website, you'll be presented with a dashboard that looks something like this. Now I've had PostHog running on my website for about a week here, so there's quite a bit of data, but if you just signed up and you just attached it to your website, it's gonna take time for people to actually use your website and for that data to come in. Now I know when you're first logging in here, this menu can look pretty intimidating, but these features are really simple to use. And I'm gonna take you through the ones that I think you're gonna find the most interesting, such as insights, recordings, live events, and the launch toolbar. Now, if you just integrated with PostHog, you'll probably want to head on over to the live events tab. And basically, this is everything that is happening on your website right now. So you can see in this live event section, we have this table here that has event, person, URL, and then the time that it happened. So the event is uh, what happened, what the user was doing. So you can see the user was viewing a page and it actually gives you a description when you mouse over it as well. Um, the person is a unique identifier for the person that was using your website. So we can see that all this traffic came from 1849. So this was all traffic just from me using my website, just playing around with it. But if we scroll down, you can see that there is different unique IDs and you can actually follow the user sessions. But before we dive into the actual user sessions, let's scroll up to the top here and you can see the next section is the URL. So this is the URL that the user was on when this action occurred. And then the time is just how long ago that event happened. And of course, you can add additional columns or export this out to a spreadsheet if you want. Let's go ahead, before we do anything like that, let's go onto our websites. And uh, let's just click one of these links here. So I'm going to click the resources button. And what I'm doing here is just generating a little bit of traffic. And if I head back to my console and refresh here, you can see that a few seconds ago, someone went to resources and it was a page view. So you can see that these uh, events are coming in in real time. I just clicked that link and the event came in right away. So super cool seeing these events come in in real time. Let's head on over to the insights tab. And this is sort of the information that you would expect from any type of analytics product. So if we just scroll through the default ones here, you can see you can see your weekly active users, your daily active users, uh, get some retention graphs and uh, referring domain and the page view funnel. So let's have a look at the referring domain here. And basically what this does is shows you exactly where your traffic is coming from. Now, it's no surprise here that most of the traffic from my website is being referred to by YouTube. People are on YouTube coming to my website. But for you, it might be interesting to see, are your users coming from Facebook? Are they coming from a post that you made on Reddit? Are they finding you on Google or Bing? Or was there like uh, some website you don't even know about and they're referring to you? 
Like, I'm not sure what a few of these websites are, but apparently uh, users are coming from them and they're finding my website through them. So there's a really cool discovery tool. Let's head back onto Insights and then have a look at the page view funnel. So the page view funnel is a really cool way to see your user retention and conversion rate. So by default here, you can see that there's three things listed. Basically, it's just showing you the drop off of users. So of 230 users that viewed the first page on my website, only 58 of them clicked a button and went to a second part of my website. And then 32 of those 58 people actually clicked on a third link. And this isn't too surprising to me. Uh, a lot of people that view my website are just interested in one tutorial. I'm not really expecting them to click around, but if I were to run an app or some sort of business where I'm selling a course or anything like that, then you may want to give someone a landing page and then you would want to see how many people actually click sign up and then see if they actually get to the end of the sign up. And this is known as a drop off rate, which is a pretty important metric to understand. Anyways, let's go ahead and have a look at the recordings, which is my favorite feature of Post Hog. So let's head on over there. And here you can see is a list of recordings. And basically what this is, is just a recorded session of a user using my website. So you can see they're looking at the sending webhooks with Python. And it looks like they're just looking at the tutorial here, scrolling down. And then uh, you can actually speed up their session here. It skips the inactivity. This particular session isn't that interesting. So let's go ahead and have a look at one of these other ones. And you can see it gives you all the information you need. This one was on an Apple computer uh, using Chrome and they're there for 42 minutes. So let's have a look at what they were doing. And it looks like they were looking at an InfluxDB tutorial. And you can see, okay, yeah, it looks like they're looking at how to do a wget uh, on the InfluxDB and they're interested in that. And uh, yeah, it's just basically like spying on how your users are actually interacting with your website. And this information is invaluable if you're building a website or a web app. You need to know how users are actually interacting with your website just so you know how users are using it and how they're enjoying it. So let's go ahead and look at a few more users here. Yeah, it looks like this one was looking at a roadmap. That's cool. And uh, if I actually want to go in and see where this user was from, I could just click on right here, the user ID, and it lets me know where this user was from. So they're from Toronto, Canada. And it actually gives some pretty detailed information here, such as uh, longitude and latitude, which I guess it gets from their IP address. But what's more interesting is you can see all the recordings that happened for this user. So you can see they were here on November 16th, uh, about five days ago, and today. So this is a returning user, and uh, you can see what they were doing before. So it looks like they're looking at uh, the Python cheat sheet, and then again, they're looking at the Python cheat sheet. So this person must be learning Python, and they have my website bookmarked, and they're just returning and looking at the cheat sheet as they're uh, doing Python tutorials, I assume. So let's go ahead and look at the events. And this just gives you more detailed information here. You can share the recording with someone else or just save it. And then it gives you everything in text actually happened here, like the page view and what they clicked. So that's the live recordings. It's pretty self-explanatory. Now, if you're in the recordings, you got to make sure to actually enable recordings if you haven't already. So make sure to do that as recordings are definitely a really great feature of Post Hog. Now, one more thing I want to show here is the launch toolbar. So let's go to launch toolbar. And then I'm going to click my website here and just go launch. If your website isn't there, you'll need to add the actual domain so you can launch it. And uh, once I get onto my website here, you can see that it's giving me this toolbar. And if you click it, you get a few different options here. And my favorite one is the heat map. And basically what the heat map does is it shows you where people are clicking on your website. 
So if we go over here to the video lessons button, we can see there's a six over it. And basically what this is saying is that this button got six clicks of the 14 clicks that happened on this particular portion of my website. And again, this can be very valuable information just so you know where people are clicking on your website. As you can see at the top right corner, I have two buttons there and it looks like of the 14 clicks that happened on this particular page this week, uh, no one clicked it. So maybe those buttons aren't giving enough value to the users. Maybe people aren't seeing it up there. So it just really gives you a lot of feedback on your website design. Anyways, there's a couple extra features on this toolbar that I'll let you guys explore yourself. Now you can see that there's some other options here, like you can use feature flags. Feature flags are a way of enabling specific features on your website. So if you're interested in testing a specific feature flag, you can do that using this toolbar. But what I want to show you now is how you can use one of PostHog's software development kits to instrument an application. So I have a really simple Python application that I'm going to demonstrate here. All right, so in my GitHub, which is uh, linked in the description below, I have a really simple application here using uh, PostHog's Python SDK where I'm going to send events to PostHog and it's going to record them. Now this particular example is for Python, but if you're using any other language, it's going to be the same idea. So the first thing here is I'm just importing my libraries and uh, I'm importing the PostHog library. So you'll have to do a pip install PostHog to get the PostHog library. The next thing you'll need to do is provide your PostHog API key. So just replace this line with your PostHog API key, which you can find in your project settings. And uh, I have debug mode on here, so it just gives you additional information. You can set this to false if it's giving you too much information, and then just turn it on when you're troubleshooting. The next thing here is uh, the post hog capture. And this is where the magic happens. Whenever you send this event, it's sending data to post hog. And you can see there's three different fields here. So there's a distinct ID, there's an event name, and then there's a dictionary of properties. So the distinct ID, you want this to be a unique way to identify the user. So if you have a database of user IDs, you'll want to make this field your user ID. The event name is basically what the user is doing at that moment. You can see at the bottom here, I'm actually using this method, the post hog capture, and I'm mapping user ID, and then I'm doing for the events movie selected, movie played, and movie paused. So those are just example events. This would be sort of like a Netflix kind of application that I have here, but you can make this any type of event that was relevant to your application. The next thing is the properties. So in Python, this is gonna be a dictionary and you can see you can just map any fields that you want here. So I have a movie ID, a movie name, and then category. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually run this script and then we're gonna have a look at the events come in on the console. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and run the script here. And you can see that it's sending the events to PostHog. So let's go ahead into PostHog and see if those events came through. All right, so I'm back in PostHog here. I'm going to go over to Live Events. And uh, I'll just refresh. And you can see that I have three events here, all from user ID 555. And uh, they did the movie selected, movie played, and then movie paused. The source was uh, from my post hog Python application. And if I actually look into the events, it's giving me the information that I supplied, such as the movie ID, the movie name, and the category. And again, you could customize the fields to be whatever you want for your application. So that's all I wanted to show you about post hog. If you're developing an application or running a website, I highly suggest you check them out. The free tier provides 1 million free events a month and up to 15,000 session recordings. So if you're running a small project or are a startup, it's going to be no cost to you. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.